Hey everybody, welcome back to Trollcast. I'm Jake, one of your hosts, and with me as always, the Stream King, the Far Cry Guy, uh, the King of Thieves, uh, the Man Who May Cry Devil, the Star Wars Big Boy, Steven. Nope. Himself. Nope. nope. What's up, nope. Steven? Nope, Pablo. Pablo's the Star Wars Big Boy. We've established that. Oh, okay. You can't call me that. I can't get, It's trademarked. I can't call you that it's anymore. It's trademarked. I'm sorry. Yeah. He is the giver and taker of nicknames, and he took that one. Okay. All right. I understand. I understand. I apologize. Uh, Steven, the man who's going to see the My Hero Academia movie with me. Is that a better title? Uh, I feel like you're going to see it with me since you're driving like two hours just to go see let me, it. Let me ask you a real deep question here, Steven. If I hadn't said, okay. guys, I'm considering going to see this movie in the one theater in Mississippi that can show that is showing it at seven o'clock on Wednesday. And you, your one response was, I'll go with you. <laughs> so you're going with me. So, mm. 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 That's de- that's debatable. It's it, it, I think it's I think it's reciprocal. Uh, but honestly, if I had known that the movie was coming and showing, period, uh-huh. I'd have gone. So you hadn't heard but about it at all. Be- See, I heard that there was a movie, but I didn't know when it was coming out. And look, my world for the past like two three weeks has been dealing with family, buying a house, getting a dog. And being sick. Four things have consumed my life. Four things. Well, I don't know how it hasn't consumed your life beforehand, because, uh, f- ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that don't know, My Hero Academia, uh, obviously the greatest anime on Earth, uh, it's having its second uh, full-length movie release publicly in theaters. Uh, it is called Heroes Rising, I believe. And uh, it is coming out this upcoming Wednesday... As far as I can tell, it is a one-time showing. Uh, they've this is again. I said the second movie they've done. They did another movie. Yep. Uh, Steven and I thought about going to it at that point, but ended up nah, nah, nah. We're not going. No, it's no big deal. No, whatever. We're not going to go. We'll catch it some other way. Haven't found a way to catch it. Have not. I'm. I am a subscriber to Funimation. I have not seen it pop up there. Uh, I don't want to get Crunchyroll or another service just to watch this one movie. So. I, I was like, so anyway, it's been advertised to me on Twitter, so I've known about it for a while, but uh, last, uh, I guess it was actually last Wednesday, uh, it, it came up in my feed, it was like, get your tickets now, and I was just like, when is this coming out again? I was like, I wonder, I wonder to like where I could go see it, so I clicked in their link, and I was like, I'm in Mississippi, and it popped up this one theater <laughs> in Mississippi where Steven is. And I was just like, the theater mm. where I see all my movies. I know you got all, you get all the movies, but uh, anyway, I was but it, but it was only showing on Wednesday night at seven p.m. And I was just like, man, that's a workout night. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to leave work and book it to where Stephen is to make it probably just in time to sit down for the credits roll or whatever the pre credits the commercials. Uh, anyway. It's going to be a lot of fun. Opening credits. Opening credits. Thank you. But so I'm surprised you hadn't. I know you're not like you're not caught up on My Hero Academia. I know you've been waiting to kind of. I like how people keep it. saying that as like as like, oh, St- that Steven, he's not caught up yet. So he's not a real fan. Like I didn't <laughs> say you were not a real fan. I wish I was strong enough to do what you're doing is all I can say. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm in for, to me personally, like I'm in, for, I feel like I'm in for a treat Wednesday because I'm going to get to watch a full, almost two, I think it's a little over two hours of my hero academia in one sitting. And like, for yep. me, I'm used to watching like 24 minutes <laughs> of my hero academia. Uh, and yep. so this is going to be great. I'm not like not going to know what to for do me. It's going to be a. for me. It's just going to be a good binge. It is. It's just yeah, going to be, it's going to, it's just going to be a great could, binge. Could, when I watch My Hero Academia, it's one of those that, like, I, I don't like having suspense with shows. Mm-hmm. Like, it, and it, it depends on the show because sometimes it can work work to its favor. But with My Hero Academia, it's the kind where, because anime is paced so weird, and even My Hero is paced extremely well to where it, it keeps going. My Hero is paced so well where, like, it, it, 
is better than any other anime I've seen, except for one that I won't mention, uh, when it comes to moving the plot forward. Uh-huh. But even then, it suffers from, like, mm-hmm. sometimes you don't feel like you got as much as you could have out of an episode. So like, it drives me nuts to watch any anime, like, caught up. Yeah. Because then it's just like, oh, I learned about... The significance of the main character's baseball bat when he was eight years old in this episode while he's fighting the big boss. I wonder when he'll actually throw a punch. Like, that's how anime is. (laughs) Yep. Well, see, when I first started watching My Hero Academia, I believe season three was airing when when you introduced it to me. And so I watched season one and season two in binge. And I was just like, yes. man, Steven, I love how much time they spend on everything. Like, this whole season was just this one school tournament. And, like, every fight between, like, two one and one character, like, it was one-on-one fights. Like, it took four episodes to get through this one fight. Like, it was so detailed. I loved it. It was great. Now that I'm caught up, it's crazy to watch because yep. it's, like, yep. one-fourth of a fight will happen in one episode and then you come back to the next one and another fourth will happen. Oh, and it's so, so good, but I highly recommend watching it in bulk. But so pa- like if you're strong enough to do still it, better like than Steven, stuff, it's, it's good. The pacing is still better than stuff like Dragon Ball or Naruto when the third spoilers for Naruto, not ship it in just regular Naruto where the third Hokage is fighting Orochimaru and then the fight ends in basically a stalemate where he's about to get stabbed with a sword and his summon is catching the sword and it takes the third Okage literally like eight episodes just to get stabbed by the sword and die. <laughs> like, anime is crazy. We love it. But My Hero Academia is paced extremely well and we love it anyway. So last thing I'll say about this. So we're going to go see the movie Wednesday. So expect a full review Next Wednesday, we're going to talk all about it. We're going to love it. Um, but Stephen, I, I am debating. I don't know how to. I don't know what to tell you to do about about the movie Wednesday, because everything I've read and seen, everything says, come see the movie. You don't have to be caught up with the anime. Come see the movie. You don't have to be caught up with the anime. Yeah. I watched one trailer, and I said. Hmm, Ah, uh, hmm. Are they sure? <laughs> because there's one specific thing that happened in the trailer, which, like, honestly, to me, if you saw it in the trailer, like, you've already been spoiled. But I would like, I, I, I don't know. There's a part of me that tells, wants to tell you, like, Stephen, I would catch up if you could. But I don't know. I also don't want to like mess up your whole. I'm waiting to see it, and also you have like 48 hours <laughs> to watch. And catch up at this point, and I don't want to. I don't want you to binge that that hard. So I don't know. It may not be as bad as the commercial made it out to be. Apparently, I just looked it up like timeline. Yeah. Apparently, Heroes Rising takes place towards the latter half of the eventual fifth season. What? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. So weird. you're not gonna be caught up. <laughs> yeah, no one. I mean, apparently, no one's gonna be caught up. <laughs> no uh, one's the, gonna be caught up. The manga is gonna be caught. Is the only people you could be caught up with. I almost started reading the manga, but anyway. Okay, all right. We've talked enough about My Hero Academia. This is Chortle Cast, the official podcast. Official, official podcast. This is the official podcast of Chortle Games. We talk about video games, TV shows, movies, and anime. And we got a great show for you this week. We're gonna be talking about. Excuse me, uh, PlayStation not coming to PAX East or GDC, along with Facebook, Oculus. They're not coming either. Um, and then I'm going to deep dive into the Animal Crossing Direct, which I am so excited about. And then uh, we're going to do a, a little bit of catch up after that. It's going to be a great time. Cool. So I'm going to dive in. Let's talk about PlayStation first, Stephen. Uh, so uh, I guess it was two weeks ago now. Uh, PlayStation had announced, hey, we're coming to PAX East. We're bringing Last of Us Part Two and these other games. Yes, that's right. There will be a public demo you can play. It's going to be, I forget what episode uh, part. It's a demo that we've seen before. 
um, when like they had their big press uh, event, um, but they were going to have it publicly playable. Uh, but then, like three days later, PlayStation, uh, or rather Sony, announced that uh, they made the difficult decision to cancel their participation in PAX East. Uh, they were they were pulling from the show because of coronavirus concerns. So huge deal, big deal. Kind of sucks for. Where does last that take week. place? Say what now? Where does that take place? When does that take place? Where? Where? I want to say San Diego, but or San Francisco. Uh, I, okay. GDC is in San Francisco. PAX East. Okay. It's probably New York. Maybe not New York. I'm not sure. I'm not sure where it takes place. Um, okay. Wait a second. PAX East. Okay, yeah, I don't know where Paxi said. Maybe you might have to Google that. But anyway, to continue on real quick, the uh, so that was that was already big, it, and it was upsetting for Last of Us Part Two because you know we've already got that game delayed. Now people had I thought they were gonna have a chance to maybe play it. Sony's not coming. Uh, then it comes out that uh, PlayStation is also dropping out of the GDC, uh, which is the um, I want to make sure I get the acronym right. I think Pax East is in Boston. It's in Boston. Okay, yeah. See, I was I was kind of close. Uh, GDC is the Game Developers Conference. Uh, Sony pulled out of yeah. that as well, uh, along with Facebook, who has Oculus. Um, both of them pulled out due to coronavirus concerns. So, crazy. Real world, it's affecting our video games right now, Steven. Um, what do you think about all this? I'm going to talk here as a uh, not very informed person. Okay. But um, it really seems like everyone is blowing the coronavirus completely out of proportion. Like, out of proportion. Because I can understand things like Outer Worlds, its switch port being delayed because of coronavirus stuff. Mm -hmm. Because, like, people who were working on that were directly affected by it because of where the outbreak was happening. Right. But when you've got people saying, hey, are people coming to Boston for this gaming convention from another place in the States, we're not going to do that because of something happening primarily in China? See, that's dumb. I don't read into it quite like that. I think of it more as there are a lot of people overseas that are going to be coming to that conference for both of those conferences. And so I think that's where their concern lies in people who are overseas who may have had a brush with, you know, coming over. I don't again, I, I think we both are a little under informed. I'm just paranoid about it. there being a plague this year because tw there's been a plague every 20s. But uh, but uh, being an uninformed person, I, I don't wholeheartedly disagree with you that like okay people are taking it a bit far but i'm going to a conference in las vegas later this year and i legitimately bought like medical face masks to wear at the very least while i'm at the airport um i may i'm probably going to carry one in my pocket while i'm at the convention center and i might put it on <laughs> if i if i so feel inclined but um i don't know i i don't it's one of those things that, like, I, I don't feel like I can really be mad about it. Like, I, obviously, I'm not going to either of these conferences. Uh, yeah. But, like, I don't think I can be mad or upset. Like, sure, disappointed. But I can't fault Sony or Facebook, for that matter, for taking a precaution, you know. Because this virus has killed people. And, and especially in China, right. where it's, it, it is an outbreak right now, it is causing a whole lot of problems. And, and people are dying and it's it's crazy. Right. Um, so I don't fault them for but taking that, uh, perhaps unnecessary precaution um, just to avoid this. But it right. does. I, I don't but wholeheartedly disagree with you that it's at, it's not necessary. At, at the at that point, whatever they were going to bring, we still need to get to see it. Right. Like if because Lord Lord knows they've prepared a Last of Us trailer or something that they were going to show up packs 
And if they're backing out and they're not going to simulcast or at least upload or do a do a um, state of play or just something that they would have shown us, so they're just backing out entirely, then something's up. Like it, it's more than just scare or being scared of what could happen with the coronavirus. At that point, I would almost say that the coronavirus was a, a, pl- a convenient a, excuse. It, it was. It was a convenient excuse. Thank you for for the wording. So yeah. because I want to make sure I I they, they I heard you right. So are you ahead. saying they did have something they were going to announce, or are you just saying like I, I I'm saying I'm saying surely if they were going to have a presence such as a playable demo for Last of Us, like if they had stuff to show, we still need to see it. Well, so we have seen it because they. Okay, I'm saying like if there's more to it than just what we have seen, like if maybe they were going to do a trailer or something alongside that. I don't know how as much about how PAX works or GDC uh-huh. um, because I don't I don't tune into those. But if if it is an E3 kind of deal where you got a playable demo for the people there, but for the people at home, you've got something to build hype with that or more information coming out with it, then we still need to get that information. Right. Usually, um, because you don't have to be there on site. It's not to, like E three where there's you know a big right. conference where they make announcements and then hey come to the show right. floor and you can play it there or whatever. Like it's normally just the hey come to the show floor and play it there part. Um, there's usually not okay. like some people make big announcements and and do things, but it's not like E three where like hey we're gonna make a huge announcement and then you'll see it on the show floor this week. Um, all we right. know that they were bringing was they, well, we had a list of games. I don't have it handy, but last of us was going to be there and they were going to let people play the demo that we've already seen. Um, and that's, right. that's all okay. we knew. So like, I, I, I don't disagree with you that, well, if they were planning something else, they could at least show us the trailer. Yeah, that's all, that's all I'm mm-hmm. saying is like, if they were planning something else, if there was going to be some kind of. Because uh, because I see PAX trailers, all, I feel like pretty frequently. Not necessarily from Sony, but I do see like, hey, here's a gameplay trailer tr- uh, shown for this game at a PAX lot of, for the a first lot of time. indie people. That's this is a great place to announce a game. Yeah, there. Mm-hmm. So, so like, if it's a situation like that, and they don't give us information that they plan on giving us ahead of time, then that seems mm-hmm. odd. To me, and that just seems kind of wrong. Well, it would be nice if they, if they, in place of this, if they did a state of play, like through some, through some together real quick. That that would be nice. Even, even though I think right now people are expecting a state of play to announce the PS5, and I don't think they're ready to do that yet. It would be nice to have like, hey, here's a pack state of play since we're not going to be there. I mean, Um, you know, you know, would be really nice is if they came out and they were just like, hey. This playable demo that was going to be public for Last of Us 2, since we weren't able to make it to PAX, we're making it available to all PS Plus subscribers. That go play that it. That would be crazy. But the, I think the hesitation there is people could hack it. People could find find code that's yep. in there. And yep. I don't know. Because it, cause, cause it probably would have been playing on a relative to PS5 build at a... At a conference right i guess yeah well no it's coming to ps4 and they haven't even said anything about ps5 mm-hmm. have they no i have okay, a feeling so with yeah. that one it's it, they might do similar to what they did with last of us part one where they released a remaster uh, yeah on uh right on ps5 but more more likely based on how they're setting everything up right now i would think it would be a backwards compatible thing that you could just oh you can play on your ps5 but um anyway right. to to wrap that in a bow though uh the, the really sad thing is like the, some of the other games that were there, a lot of those were some indie games or some smaller games that now they're not going to have that presence at the Sony booth because Sony pulled out. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where it yeah. is really sad. A state of play would be nice, though, if they would just like, hey, you know, this is a state of play of a what we would have done at PAX. A state you know? of play basically, a state of play costs them basically nothing. So they kind of owe it to people that were expecting that. Mm-hmm. I'm not even talking the consumer. I'm talking the indie developer. They need they need to be able to use that platform and state of play for Sony. That that just costs as much as it would cost anyone to make a video. Right. So like, do it. They got to get that voice actress. You That's, know what I mean? They got to get that them graphics together. 
it's a whole deal. You know what I mean? They gotta they gotta get moving. Oh on. yeah. They could just get a stock iMovie <laughs> page turning graphic, and then they'd be there. You sick. go. There you go. <laughs> this, the, it'd be like in cartoon kid writing words, and it's like this is our Pax East <laughs> state of play that we threw yep. together with like the, the papyrus as the font. <laughs> Just like something you don't do. This is, this is, we threw this <laughs> together real quick. Blame the coronavirus. With uh, crawling, crawling by Linkin Park playing in the background because it's an anime music video now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, uh, sad, sad to see that. But as far as we know, there was no new information coming. So hopefully, if there was information planned, they'll do something like yeah. that. But anyway, uh, let's move on. Steven, you can right. lean back. Please feel free to ask any questions. Uh, are you okay. are you getting Animal Crossing? No, okay. all right, no. I, unless if Anna sees it and she's like, Stephen, I need this. I I'm not. Uh, but you talk about Animal Crossing. I'm actually going to get up. My dad called me and said, "Call me when you get a sec." So I'm going to take this sec while you're talking, and then I'm going to walk back, get to frame, and then and then be like, "Oh wow, that's so cool!" At the most recent thing you said, so that I can act like I've been okay, here. Okay, that time. sounds good. I won't know that you're gone, okay. other than the fact that you just told me. So I'll move on. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Uh, Animal Crossing had its most recent direct um, literally a month away from the game. Uh, the 20th of this uh, this past week, uh, they did their direct. Tom Nook showed up, said, hey, everybody, welcome to the direct. We're very excited. We've broken this into three parts. We're going to tell you all about it. Uh, so I'm just going to go down kind of some, some new things that we learned, some things that we kind of got clarification on. Um, throughout the direct and then just kind of talk about my general hype and excitement and go from there. And then Steven will eventually pop back in and be like, wow, what a, what a cool thing. Uh, so I'm just going to go down this list. I've got, uh, from my GN of what they talked about. So, Cause there was so much in there. Uh, they kind of clarified seasons. Um, when you first pick your Island and you get to pick your Island too, that was something that, that, that we didn't know up front. You're gonna to get to pick from some sta- like some standardized layouts of uh, um, of, of an island. Um, like there was one that had like a dog shape, like a dog bone shaped river that didn't go anywhere. And I was like, I'm not doing that one. Um, there was one where there were three lakes that drained into one river that ran the course of the island in a U shape. Anyway, just a bunch of different starting layouts. So you pick from one of those, and then you pick Northern Hemisphere or Southern Hemisphere. Uh, This may or may not be a big deal to you. I'm in the Northern Hemisphere, and I feel like in the past, the games have just defaulted to the Northern Hemisphere. If you know otherwise, please correct me in the comments. I don't don't really know. Um, But this is kind of a new thing, period, is they're doing hemispheres. Uh, So you can pick Northern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere, both hemispheres get all four seasons, winter, spring, summer, or fall, whatever. Um, and uh, it basically just depends on what region you're in. Because in the norm- northern hemisphere, when it's summer, it's actually winter in the southern hemisphere. Which is really weird for me, living in North America, in the northern hemisphere. I've never lived in a different hemisphere. So it's very strange to think like, wow, when I'm having Christmas it's like summer for them. And that's just a weird thing to think about. But anyway, uh, so that'll reflect your area and then is a big, exciting thing. Um, they've also got a, um, this whole deal. I'm trying to make sure there was, that was it on seasons. They talked about each season is going to have different events or not even events, but like activities for you to do. Um, in the December one, they had, uh, the, the villager making a snowman, in spring, they were picking flowers. Uh, in fall, they were raking leaves and picking up mushrooms, which like may or may not sound fun cool. to you, but I was just like, oh, man, this is so great. I can't wait. Uh, they talked about that how when the game so starts, cool. it's going to be getting into spring uh, and warming up for summer. Spring. So um, that's kind of the environment we're going to be walking into on the 20th. Uh, and it was all really, it was really cute how they did it in the direct. They were just like, your departure date is due for, because this is like, an island getaway package is how they're pitching the whole game. Uh, so it was just great. Uh, they talked about island services. Um, let's see, making sure you get a tent for crafting, which we knew. They talked a lot about crafting. We talked about the Nook phone and Nook Miles, which we kind of knew a little bit about. My, Nook, Nook Miles are basically 
you know, you can complete challenges and uh, get rewards. And uh, there was kind of a question of, so does this replace bells? Is this in addition to bells? And it is in addition to bells. Um, you can get special things with your Nook Miles. Uh, one of the things they show that you can get uh, with your Nook Miles is a special ticket that'll take you to a mystery island that is way out there. And you can't, like, build on this island or do anything, but there's going to be trees and plants and bugs and fish and, you know, all sorts of other stuff that, like, you would not see. Um, a lot of people, if you watch reaction videos, Girlfriend Reviews did a reaction video when she saw bamboo for the first time, she screamed. And like, that's what the, that's what this mystery Island is. is it just has a bunch of really different things than other than what's on your Island. Um, so that was kind of a cool thing. Uh, they talked about wasps and scorpions and there was a spider in uh, a mystery Island. So there are, there are like dangerous things on the Island that you kind of have to be aware of. Um, Obviously, your character doesn't die, but like you could get sick or you could, you know, get passed out or something. Uh, or die. Oh my gosh, Steven, hi. Hi. <laughs> wow, you're really loud all of a sudden in my ear. I don't know why. You may not be loud everywhere else. So, question. Yeah? Question. Question I'd like to pose the, uh, the Animal Crossing thing. Yes. So, you said there's a Nook phone because of Tom Nook, I yes. presume? Yes. Do you think Nintendo is going to get so sued by the Nook e-reader? <laughs> Isn't that Amazon? That's the question. That's, uh, no, that's Kindle. Kindle. Nook Kindle was Nook. Yeah, yeah. something that, yeah, because, like, there was the Kindle, which was like a tablet, and then the Nook, I think, was, it may have been owned by Barnes & Noble or something, but it was like a black and white e-reader uh -huh, that was super uh -huh. cheap. That did not do well. <laughs> no, it did not. Um, I don't know. Probably. It's it's possible they could get sued. Is I mean, is Kindle even still doing anything with the Nook? I don't think they are. No, 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 no. Kindle is not associated with the Nook. Jake, try to keep up. <laughs> my, my bad. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Nook e-reader is... No one, okay, just keep no talking. one uses e-readers anymore. If you use an e-reader, leave a comment. I want to know. Uh, okay, so then we talked about home upgrades. My phone. So um, once they kind of got through the basics of you're finding, you're, you're putting your camp in a location, you get to put where your villager's camp goes. That was kind of exciting. Um, I'm like already planning like my layout of I want my neighbors here. Um, it's still unclear to me based on everything I've looked for that I don't know if you get to pick the villagers that come with you. I'm assuming it is random, so I hope I like the two villagers. You land with, it's you and two villagers, and then Tom Nook and Timmy and Tommy or whatever. Uh, so, anyway. Uh, you can get a home once you, I, I assume once you hit a certain point in the game, you're going to get a home. Uh, you can upgrade that home to be bigger. Uh, you can add additional rooms to the home, which, like, I, I played... GameCube Animal Crossing, which I did not realize, and maybe I am wrong, but I watched a video kind of somebody talking about like the history of Animal Crossing. Apparently, the first Animal Crossing was was the one on GameCube that I played, <laughs> and I I I never knew that. Um, I thought I had I, when when New Leaf came out, I was like, oh man, I I jumped right in the middle here and and am am lost. But apparently, I started at the very beginning, but. Um, I don't remember in New Leaf or even in the GameCube one if you could expand your house so much that you had different rooms. It was usually just one room that got bigger and bigger. Anyway, I digress. You can continue to do all of that. One benefit of upgrading your home like that is you get hidden storage. So, like, you can just store things in your house. Um, oh, sorry. My computer just popped up an image that said we are going to restart your computer to install updates in 30 seconds i was like no don't do that um all right crafting we talked about that you get to craft lots of stuff i've talked about that uh party play they kind of talked about how we we already knew there was going to be a multiplayer element but they talked a little bit about how that was going to work you can have multiple people play you can have multiple people 
like have an account on your switch. So like if I had an account and I had an account on my switch for Steven, um, I could make Steven a character. And when he comes to play with me, we could play together. And basically there's a leader in the, in the party and that's who the camera follows and everyone else just kind of follows that person. Um, so kind of nice. Uh, they talked about how you can connect with other people wirelessly and invite them to your island, that sort of thing. Uh, they talked about the Nook link, which is going to be, that's going to get you in-game voice chat. So there's going to be voice chat for Animal Crossing, believe it or not, uh, which is going to be really weird in my opinion. But uh, you can also do text chat. So if I went to somebody else's island, I could text chat to them. Um, using my phone, using the Nook link, um, which is exciting. You can also scan QR codes with that to get designs from previous Animal Crossing games. So, Steven, in the past, in like New Leaf and Happy Home Designer, you could uh, design t shirts and like wallpapers and stuff uh, on your DS. And uh, basically it would give you a QR code and you could scan that and send it to friends or whatever. Um, but now you can do that for animal crossing. It's still unclear if there's going to be some sort of design element in this game. Like, I don't know that you'll be able to make designs in this game. That's still kind of a question floating around. It sounds like they want you to do it in an older one, but we'll, We'll go with that, which now now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, I need to, because I have New Leaf, and I didn't get very far in it. I should go in, get the customization design, and I should make a Chortle Games t-shirt for my character. Do it. I, yeah, that's a good idea. I should do it. Uh, okay. Uh, the Nook link, though, will not be available uh, at launch. It'll be sometime in, in uh, March. Probably the biggest deal, though, is you get to you're going to get to customize your island. It's it's incredibly customizable. We've seen trailers where like full cities and villages were on these islands, and it was very unclear how that was all going to work. Like at over time, there are going to be free updates, and I don't even know that it's so much. Like a lot of people were calling it, oh, it's DLC, it's DLC, it's free DLC, whatever. I feel like it's going to be even different than that, where it's just like the museum might roll around in April, you know, like it might just, that will become available in April or it might be something that's dependent on how fast you develop your, your, your Island. Like if you get to the point where you can build a house, like a, a predetermined number of days after that moment, you'll get the museum or something, but you're getting the museum. You're getting the able sisters clothing shop. You're getting, Timmy and Tommy's little uh, furniture store. Like, there's all all the normal stuff is going to be there. Um, it's just going to happen eventually as you grow your place. You're going to get to build bridges and ramps, and you're going to get to build pathways. So, like, you can literally pave your whole island. Uh, and then the craziest thing is you're going to be able to terraform your island at a certain point. Um, so, like in the in the direct, we watched a guy basically dig like a river started at a certain point he terraformed up to where the river started and then basically created a waterfall and then at the top of the waterfall he created a lake and then he made like a little park up there with this lake and then had a ramp to get up to it um it was very very cool so you're literally going to be able to terraform your island and be able to make your village whatever you want it to be. Like, just go watch the Direct and look at some of the cool stuff they did. It was awesome. Uh, they talked about island activities where uh, Celeste, Sahara, um, some other characters that we've seen before are going to come in. Um, there's going to be a bug-catching festival, a fishing tournament's on, um, all sorts of stuff. Uh, we've talked about design already. Anyway... It's super exciting. The only real negative to come out of this, is, and, and the thing that really everybody's talking about, is that um, there is no cloud saves for this game. Um, basically, 
Nintendo said there are no cloud saves if something happens to your Switch where it's a catastrophic failure or you lose it or it's stolen, you can contact them and they can retrieve a backup. And that's what you can get. But like you have no control to to pull a cloud save off of the cloud. It's all on your Switch, you know, whatever, which makes me very nervous in general. And a lot of people are upset about it. Supposedly it is to halt cheaters and, and kind of, stop people from time traveling maybe or something i don't really know they did say they are working on a way for people to transfer their save from one switch to another which is at least a start um because i'm i'm going back and forth on if i want a switch light or not i'm just i'm fighting the urge so bad and and you know what Lee Allison keeps telling me and what I'm sure Steven you're thinking a little bit too it's like why do you need it the switch can do both like it, 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 it why why do you need it for me the switch light being smaller I play in handheld mode 95 percent of the time like the only time I'm putting it into a TV is if I'm live streaming what I'm doing so there's a part of me that may want to get a switch light for Animal Crossing and just that be my island. But I don't know. I just, I can't, I keep going back and forth because they've made this so difficult. Like it's not an easy process to make, to, to trade off between two different devices. So I don't know. Steven, what did you think? You, you missed a lot of that, but. You wake, you wake again? Yeah. Uh, don't get a switch light. <laughs> I'm not, but I'm really fighting the urge to get one. But this, honestly, yeah. Animal Crossing is helping me fight it because they've made it so convoluted to, to try and do anything with it that I just don't want to risk it. I don't want to risk getting it and then it not being able to flip flop and do whatever. So anyway, yeah. I I think you should show Anna uh, some of the the direct or something. And see if she's interested. I think you two would have fun creating a village, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. I think that that's the kind of game that she would get into. And it's a very... It, the fun thing about Animal Crossing 2, or, well, it may or may not be fun for you, I don't know. It's it's very much... Um, it's a game you take one step at a time. It's not... Um, it, it's a game that you have to play... A little bit every day but play every day for a year <laughs> kind of thing um, it's not a game that's meant to be binged uh, necessarily but anyway y'all should look it out look out for it check it out I will not be able to live stream it when it comes out but I will do a live stream of it at some point I'll show you guys around my island and all that good stuff <coughs> Oof, yep. well I've talked for a little bit Steven why don't we catch up and this is when we talk about what we've been playing this week Steven, you got to play with an Oculus Quest. What was that like? I did. It was cool. I want one. Yeah? I really want one. <laughs> because um, it, no cables whatsoever, uh, which is crazy. It runs off a phone. Yep. Um, and the graphics, you can't really tell the difference, honestly, between like that and a PlayStation VR. I played Vader Immortal. Really? Well, I couldn't tell a difference. Uh -huh. I'm sure there is, but I couldn't tell. Right. Um, if you gave me a side-by-side -side comparison, I could probably tell, uh -huh. but it still looks great. I played Vader Immortal. That was pretty cool. It was like that old Star Wars arcade game, mm -hmm. you know, that would be in, that was like in every movie theater uh -huh. for the early 2000s. Um, and uh, there was the part where you had the joystick and you could like lightsaber fight with Vader and you move the joystick to block his attacks. Uh, that's what the lightsaber fighting feels like, but way cooler than what I just described. Because um, it's in VR. I play, it's, yeah, I played a little bit of Beat Saber. Ooh, excuse me. A little bit of Beat Saber. Felt very different um, doing that without cables and with, you know, good hit detection. Mm -hmm. It's funny because I actually did worse in the quest because I've been playing PlayStation Beat Saber for so long that there is a natural 
I I feel like I hit on like wrong timing uh. almost because I'm calibrating my the way I play to work with PlayStation VR, but I feel like the Quest is just better detection because PlayStation VR uses lights and is not... With Beat Saber, it's hard for, like, really fast songs because you hear me say every single time I play, like, gosh, I'm missing so many that I should be hitting right. because for that quick of movements, it's hard for the PlayStation to keep up. But I feel like with the Quest, it's more precise with Beat Saber mm-hmm. specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a lot of fun. I really liked it. Um, it made me want one uh, because Andrew, uh, the whole reason I was able to play is because Andrew uh, has been visiting uh, my brother and he brought it and uh, he was telling me things like the uh, the Quest actually, if you get a cable mm-hmm. uh, that is kind of expensive, but still it can operate as a Rift uh-huh. for your PC. Mm-hmm. So the Rift is now a completely pointless device. You just don't need one. Just get a Quest. Just get a Quest. Uh, and uh, that's really cool. So, I'm, I'm kind of tempted to, to get a quest. I, I mean, obviously not right now because <laughs> moving on to the rest of my catch up, I just bought a house. Yay! And you're moving. And in. I get a dog. As of the airing of this podcast, <laughs> I will probably be be picking up my puppy to take home by the time this podcast ends. That's great. Um. Also, just bought a house. We love it. It's great. But here's my other life update, everybody. I'm sick, yeah. and you can probably hear it in my voice. And and last week, I know you're thinking, oh, Steve, you said that last week. Oh, your throat was hurting and everything. Yeah. Doesn't that suck that I'm still sick, but now it's just now moving from my throat into, like, my nasal <laughs> pathways and everything? Like, it's the worst. It the worst. I don't get sick very often, but when I do, I get headaches really easily, but I don't get sick very often. Mm-hmm. But when I do... Like, it really is the man flu or whatever they call it. Because Anna was saying, like, oh, yep, he's got the man flu because it's there's, like, an old myth. And I think Mythbusters probably tested this. I've been watching Mythbusters. Mm-hmm. There's your other uh, shout-out in the in the um, catch-up. But th- there's an old myth that when men get colds, it's worse than when women get colds. Mm. And I kind of feel like there's truth to it because I feel like women naturally have a better immune system. Right. Um, <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. Um, but it's, it sucks. For, this is the third time in a row I've only lived, uh, like I, I've only lived on a piece of property that I've paid for three times. First apartment. That was the one where shootings happened. Second apartment, which is the one that I've been living at. And then the house that we just moved into every single time I've moved into one of those, I've had a cold. So move in day has been the worst every time because move-in already right. sucks. Move-in right? sucks. Add to that, add to that, make it like the constant pain whenever you talk, breathe, or swallow, and also the inability to breathe and also the feeling that someone has their boot on your head and is just standing on it. It's the worst. <laughs> Man, you had it rough. Yes. Yes, I did. But the house is great. We love it. It's I'm wonderful. Excited. I can't wait to meet the dog when I come to see My Hero Academia. Um, I've been just playing some more Fire Emblem Three Houses, um, Ash and Wolf DLC. Uh, really enjoying it so far. I like the new characters a lot more than I thought I would. Um, I don't like them that much. Yet. I mean, I wouldn't say they're certainly not my new favorites, but... I I don't I other than well I'll get there in a minute other than maybe Edelgard <laughs> and well, who's the punk Hugo is that the guy who's with her that's lit no 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 in, in like the main game who's her like right oh, hand who cares H- Hubert <laughs> Hubert something like that anyway other than those two there's not really a character that I like hated from my playthrough. Um, and I when I saw yeah. these characters, I was like, ugh. Like, I don't... From face value, I don't like any of these new characters. Now that I've had a little bit of time with them, I actually at least like them. But I'm not like, oh man, 
you guys are great. I want to put Balthus and Raphael in a room together and see what happens. So I'm. Yeah, I, I, I guess my problem with the characters is that you hear, oh, this is the the secret uh, fourth house, and they've been in hiding. But you look at them, and they just all look like they come from the flashiest anime. Yes. And it's like, if you looked at them, you'd be like, personas that way, guys. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Especially and, Yuri and Balthus. They both look yes, so much yes. like it. Uh, Constance, who I'm now going to call Coco, because uh, that's what somebody called her in my most recent live stream of it. And I was like, oh, that's a much easier thing to remember. Uh, Coco... Her personality deserves to be on like Persona or something else because she is way oh out there. Oh my god! She's but she so and annoying. Happy are not quite as crazy uh, looking as as uh, Yuri and Balthus. But anyway, Balthus's twelve pack abs that he has just need to go away. <laughs> well, so I'll tell you, I'll tell you what this. Funnily enough, what this and I mean, this is kind of why you do DLC. Um, Playing through this, it's made me okay. It's made me say, okay, yeah, I need to do another playthrough. I want to bring in these characters. I've got all sorts of new, yep. like, there's a sauna at the school now. All my characters have new outfits. Like, there's all sorts of things I want to do the game over with. There's certain characters I didn't yeah. spend any time with. Like, I think it's Bernadette or Bernita, um, who's the girl who hides in the cl- her room the whole game. Uh, I yeah. never interact. I you literally never don't see her, her if you aren't Black Eagles or Recruiter. Yeah, uh, until like it was like the month that that part two was like the transition between part one and part two was about to happen, and uh, I was like, yeah. "Crap! Anybody who I am have not recruited at this point is gonna have to die at some point," <laughs> and so I, like, in a last ditch effort, like I tried to befriend her. Uh, but it wasn't enough because I had, I had literally never talked to her other than one time. Fun fact. I assume you recruited Petra. I did. I did. Love Petra. Did you know that, that she does not die? Uh, does she just leave? If it, it, at least at least in the Blue Lions playthrough, I believe it was Petra. When you defeat her. She leaves. She escapes, mm. and you never hear from her again. Interesting. That's nice. That's good to know. Um, well, yeah. I had to kill Bernadette, and it was really effing sad because I I had not even friended her enough to like because like Ash, I had recruited, and when we switched to part two, he was not on my team, but I was able to re-recruit him right. once I bumped into him again. Uh, and I did not get that yeah. opportunity with her. And it was really, it w- for me, it w- I was just like, dang, <laughs> I hate that I, I messed that up. Anyway, all that to yeah. say, I want to go back and do another playthrough. But I'll tell you what, Steven, I have not spent that much time with Edelgard because she's a garbage piece of trash, whatever. But Edelgard, yeah. I've had to spend a little bit of time with Edelgard doing this DLC and I'm not going to lie, Steven, I'm not going to say I'm not going to come out here and say I like her or anything, but I've, I'm really more and more interested about doing a Black Lions playthrough. I mean, a Black uh, Black Eagle playthrough. Black Eagles, don't you dare mistake the Lions for those scum. I, I, I'm just, I'm just be honest. I, I kind of want to see what it looks like. Uh, then on watch a YouTube video. Watch a YouTube video. Don't I betray could, me. You know, but I just, I want to try it. I want to go. You know, Infamous, the Infamous games, you had a good path and a bad path. I always did the good path right. first. Then I went through and did that dark path. You know what I'm saying, Stephen? Here, here's went, the, went, here's went, the difference, went, though, I Jake. I effed up the whole town. You know, I went, I went evil. Here, 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 and that's what I want to do. Here's the difference, Jake. In Infamous, let's say Second Son is an example the different paths give you a different gameplay experience. If you are good, the uh, p- the pixel ability, whatever it was called, that was my favorite power set. Uh, if you're good, it's more of a stealth assassination kind of play style. If you're bad, it's a demon summoning yeah. play style. It's yeah. different. In 
Fire Emblem, the only gameplay difference you'll get by going Black Eagles is that you'll get to play with Edelgard and Hubert, which we just established both suck. Yeah, but if I so, do New Game Plus, I can recruit everybody who I really like. Which is why you should just go Blue Lions because they are actually good guys and their story is yeah, Stephen, I want to go to the dark side. I got to see what it's like. I got to go. I got to go. Oh, you want to go to the dark side? Play Blue Lions. You'll see Dimitri go to the dark side, let me tell you. Yeah, but he's not dark enough. He's the middle. I want to I don't want to run the middle of the road. I want Not dark be on the enough. Dark side. Really? Really not dark enough. Okay. Wow. I don't know. I I may not do it. I may honestly, you know, when it's all said and done, I may just go Golden Deer again cuz that's the way to go. But um I don't know. I've been thinking more and more about doing a Black Eagle <sighs> playthrough just to see what it's like. Just to see what it's like. You're wrong. You're wrong. Ugh. Maybe I'll change my mind, but Animal Crossing will probably get here first, so I may never get to do it. Yeah, that's true. I feel like you'll never beat that playthrough because Animal Crossing will happen. And what happened to me when Fire Emblem came out with every other Switch game I owned will happen to you and you'll just forget <laughs> yeah. it exists. Yeah, pretty much. I, I'm hoping I just at least beat the DLC before I get before Animal Crossing gets here, which I feel like Animal Crossing comes out tomorrow. But it's not even March yet. So I've got a long way to go. Yeah. Yep, once Warlords of New York comes out for Division, that's going to be most of my gaming time. There you go. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this episode of Trollcast. We do hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, there's a couple things you can do to help us out. Number one, if you're on YouTube, you're already at trollgames.com. You can like this video, share it with your friends, leave us a comment. We appreciate you. If you're watching on Facebook, you're at Turtle Games on Facebook. You can also like this video, share it with your friends, leave a comment, like our Facebook page. Uh, YouTube, you can subscribe as well if you want. Uh, and then um, we sometimes do streams on Twitch. Our Twitch is Chortle underscore games. We aren't in a place where we can upload the podcast to Twitch yet, but hopefully that's coming uh, down the pipe. So if you sometimes watch on Twitch, would prefer to watch us on Twitch, if you want to see that happen, go follow us on Twitch because that, that'll help us get to the point we got to get to to do it. Uh, and then um, let me think here. What else are we doing? Uh, this is not the only thing we do here on the channel. The podcast airs every Monday at 12 o'clock Central Standard Time. Uh, we have a great time, and then we send you on your merry way. Uh, we do live streams on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturday nights, normally starting around 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, Steven's going to do Tuesday. He's going to do Devil May Cry 5. Kind of a test stream. See how the new house internet is? Yeah. It's pretty bad. Until I get it upgraded, because I'm basically, um, I'm basically uh, in bed with AT and T right now. Uh, like you know that meme where it's a guy and a girl in bed, and the girl is just like, I bet he's <laughs> thinking about other girls. That girl is AT and T, and I am thinking about <laughs> Ceasefire. <laughs> Because okay. they can offer me fiber. That's uh, all right. Um, that was an interesting way to take that, but all right, I, I like it. It's a good visual. <laughs> so ho hopefully, I, I I am gonna have pretty not crummy internet, but not up to par with what I've had by a pretty significant amount um, for who knows how long. Hopefully not too long, but I am going to be upgrading it as soon as that becomes yep. available. Uh, then Thursday, the tentative plan is to do some Division 2 uh, with uh, our friend Jeremy uh, from 8-Bit Gamesters um, just to kind of keep keep that rolling, get excited for, is it Warlords City? Yeah. Warlords of Warlords New York. Warlords of New York. Uh, that'll be Thursday. Uh, I will be on stream Friday. I don't know if it's going to be solo or with Steven, but if it's solo, we'll probably be doing Dreams. But I'll, I'll put it up for vote. Um, if you're on our Discord, you can get to our Discord in the description of this video. Uh, if you are on Facebook and can't find it or on Twitch and you can't find it, you can go to totalgames.com and there's a button in the banner to get to it. All that to say, we have a new channel in the Discord that is live stream voting. It's not for chatting. That's a... Why are we just now I, made I this? I came <laughs> up with it because I was doing a lot of voting this, this week. Uh... Well, but we've been doing so much voting. I'm just surprised that we just now made this. We I know. So I'm, I'm a genius. Ago. I appreciate it. You can put me in the Hall of Fame later. But, uh... <laughs> um, the La Hall of Fame channel comes in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. Thank you. Um, uh, that, that channel is not for chatting. It is just for reacting to 
games as part of your vote. So I'm I'm also trying to delete as I go. So I've got my main chat message in there that's like, hey, this is what this channel is for. You know, don't abuse it, whatever. Uh, and uh, then I, I put in, you know, hey, I'm live streaming tonight. What am I playing? And then I put three or four games. You come in, react to you it. You know, you could. Uh, I could what? You, you know, you could. You can make it to where uh, you can disable the ability to send messages on that channel, but not disable the ability. You know to what, them. Steven, if you're such a discord wizard, why don't you do that? Look, making Prometheus, uh, there's a plug there. Making the Prometheus project has taught me a lot about discord and how it does. Things. I mean, if you, if you, I, so. I give you full permission to go do that, make it where people can just react okay. and can't comment. Cause freaking pokey chat, uh, stupid, F and Pokey Chat. Look, I, okay, I can't do anything about look, Pokey Chat. Know, so our Discord <laughs> is is plagued by Pokey Chat, which is a Pokemon simulation that's in the thing. We created a channel specifically for it, and it never posts there, but it posts in every other thing. I, so I don't know if you got to see this interaction, Stephen, but I made that channel, the live stream voting channel. I typed out my thing that was like, hey, guys, this is for voting. Don't comment. Just react. Uh, and then I said at everyone, I'm streaming tonight. What are we streaming? And as soon as I sent that, Pokey Chat pops up like a wild Turtwig has appeared. And I literally in all caps was like, damn you, Pokey Chat. Why? <laughs> <laughs> That's that's what happened. I, like I, I used the division channel for the first time in a long time when they announced Gear 2.0, and literally two messages that I sent in a row, a Pokemon spawned, and it was just like, someone get rid of this. Like, why haven't we killed it yet? Let's just do it. Brody, with Brody it. gave it a just, final chance, and he hasn't terminated it yet. So I don't know. I don't know what to do about it. It is time to it terminate time it. We need to, to kill it. Poke chat. But anyway. That's enough. Thank you guys for watching this episode. Uh, we will see you Tuesday night for uh, a Devil May Fry May, May, May Five. Devil May, Devil May Fry, Fry, the spinoff of it's it's the, the Devil crossover May of Devil Cry, May Cry, May Cry Cookin Mama Baby. Uh, <laughs> uh, but whatever. Anyway, that's happening Tuesday. Go see it. Thank you everybody for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>